Can you smell it? Add dollars rolling in. What a glorious day to be a capitalist. <laughs> For you? For a brilliance and courage under fire. Oh, yeah, I just put them down. The switchboard's on overload. There's talk of a movie deal. <laughs> Capturing Amanda Dillon's rescue live. Ringing all the, the, the delicious drama out of every moment. Well, I'm glad you approve. Approve? <laughs> right down to the title. Uh, Threatened Innocence. The continuing story of Janet Green. Why aren't you watching? Oh, I edited the show, so... Viewer response is off the charts, Liza. Come on, let's dance on the desk. Oh, I left my tap shoes at home. He really got to you, didn't he? Who? Jake Martin. Jake has nothing to do with my mood. Well, according to Marion... Oh, please, would you buy her a life? <laughs> uh, he wasn't too thrilled with the way you handled the Amanda Dillon rescue. Well, I make the journalistic decisions. Jake is a glorified gopher, right? I'll talk to him. No. He's just green. He doesn't understand the business. It's not his job to second-guess you. He was worried about Amanda. That's all. Yeah, all the Martins wear their bleeding hearts with pride. I explained the situation to him. Everybody knows that Janet Green is Amanda's mother. To have withheld the facts would have been irresponsible. Hey, I'm on your side. There are no sides. Jake questioned me. So what? So what? So you're not angry with it? No, why should I be? Please, I've gotten mail already that I've exploited the child. You didn't create her twisted lineage. Still, her pain is our gain. We can't sit on a story while the rest of the world runs with it. Liza, don't tell me you're actually worried about how this looks. Would that be so unbelievable? You made the right decision. I egregiously agree with you. I am proud of you. If, you. if you're so worried about your tainted image, why don't you take it to the next step? And what's that? That the next step would be to go and visit the little victim. Take the largest stuffed animal you can find and wrap it with a red ribbon. Mm -hmm. And bring a cameraman in tow, of course. No use letting all that goodwill go to waste. Mm, just a little something for the six o'clock news. Yeah, we're with promos, if we're lucky. I'm on my way. You should let more people see the sight of you. And ruin my image? Liza. Yes. When there's a tragedy like Laurel Dillon's death, everybody second guesses themselves. You're not alone. Okay. If Jake continues to interfere, I'll uh, set him straight. Adam, I run this station. On my worst day, I can handle Jake Martin. That's what I'm counting on. Get away. How do you Get sleep away. at night, Liza? Hey, she don't got no conscience, that's how. Look, I'm the one who found your daughter. Yeah. She would have died from exposure. You found my daughter, you exposed her, then you made your money. I just wanted to give her my gift. You know what you can do with that gift. I told you not to spill that story. The truth? Amanda doesn't know that Janet's her mother. And whose fault is that? Who lied to her? I got a right to protect my kid. You got a right to put her in a bubble? And I sure as hell will protect her from you. Protect, protect. And you better take her out of school, Trevor. Better make sure she never reads a newspaper or a magazine, goes to the park or has a play date. The truth is everywhere. It's in every newspaper, every magazine, especially in the memories of every townsperson, that Janet Green is a local legend. You are so unbelievably cruel. Cruel? Cruel is lying to your child. Cruel is letting her know that her mother doesn't exist when she lives right across town. Look, you have a problem with my show, then you're the parent. Turn it off. But don't ask me not to do my job. Shove your job. I'm not going to forget this. I just came to bring this to Amanda. Please make sure she gets it. Have a good day. Oh, Liza's not back yet. I didn't know she was gone. I assume you two have found neutral ground. Did we need it? Well, she mentioned that you were not thrilled with her uh, special on Amanda's rescue. Yeah, yeah, well, I think it's wrong to exploit that kid's situation. Your job is to execute station policy, Jake, not dictate it. Yeah, I used to work for a community hospital when I was in California. And we had a, a kid come in once. He'd been in a car accident, come into the ER. 
And we sent him away. We sent him to a hospital 30 miles away because he didn't have the right insurance. Standard policy for that hospital. Better make it right. No. But you're still missing the point. We are not running an ER here. Well, tell that to Amanda. <laughs> Jake, um, I can see we're not always going to agree on everything, but I like to encourage differences of opinion. Keeps people flexible. Oh, uh, are you busy tonight? No. I, why? Why don't you join us for dinner? I don't think that would be such a good idea. Oh, no, no, no. Under, with a more relaxed atmosphere, maybe it might help you and Liza resolve any residual tension. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. What do you have to lose? Bend some fences. You know, we do spend a lot of time here. Nursing grudges probably wouldn't be such a good idea. Sure, why not? Excellent. I'll have my secretary call with the time. All right. Oh, did I miss something? I don't play you. You didn't. Not after I asked you not to. I told you I could handle him. I didn't usurp your authority. Oh, please. This day can't get any worse. It didn't go well at the hospital? <sighs> Trevor ambushed me in the hall. No human interest shots? No, just a nice little shot of him putting his hands around my neck. Oh. It's too bad. Yeah. A nice sappy shot of you and the kid would have rounded off the story very nicely. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint. Okay. You disappoint? Oh, contraire. Look at these numbers. Liza, you did it. You pulled in the best numbers of the season and you gave our viewers an emotional roller coaster they'll never forget. It's not bad. <laughs> not bad. They're off the charts. And so are you. Lucretia is making your favorite menu. Tonight we celebrate. Uh, does the celebration include other members of the Chandler family? Well, of course, my daughters are coming. Come on, these cozy little dinners are beginning to grow on you. <sighs> yes, like veins of mold on Stilton. Remind me to wear my beaded flat jacket, dear. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a sound that portends a perfect evening. Pour one for me, too, will you, darling? <laughs> Think some mother's baked cookies. Welcome to family night at the Chandler's. Oh, I'm glad to be invited. I really am. Stay tuned. It's going to be magical, darling. Adam will be basking in the glow of his bride's TV triumph. You know, darling, tonight just might uh, be the night. <laughs> Why don't you hold your breath? You can be tonight's entertainment. Well, nothing strokes a man like success, darling. I bet Adam will kick your bedroom door in tonight, darling. <laughs> mother, do you think you might be able to sing a different song? In a subtler key, I don't need Dr. Ruth cheering me on from the sidelines. Ah, Liza, you look... Hello, Marian. Hello. Uh, you look uh, very nice. Must be that uh, fabulous dress. <clears throat> well, Adam, your darling daughters have arrived. So glad you could make it. Be here. This is an unexpected uh, surprise. Did did you tell Lucretia that Jake would be here? Of course. When w when did you invite Jake? Today. Is there a problem? No, no. I I guess there was just a misunderstanding. You told me it was a family gathering. Well, it is. But Jake's part of our WRCW family now, and uh, Sky is quite partial to him. Besides, the man is the hero of the hour. So all this is uh, an arrangement for Sky? No, 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 of course not. I just, I thought it'd be great fun to have Jake with us tonight. The, the fact that Sky is partial to him is an added bonus. Great. Can I get you something? Yeah, uh, bourbon if you have some. Whiskey. Fine. Rocks, please. I, uh... <laughs> I thought I was here to mend fences. Escort duty wasn't discussed. Oh, 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 women. They, they have to arrange every detail at a dinner party, you know. All the participants have to be neatly paired off or panic in the suits. Ignore it. <clears throat> mm. Hello, Skye. 
Mary. Barry, it's Barry? delightful to see you. It's always a pleasure, Marion. Thank you. Liza, Adam, and the famous Jake Martin. Outstanding <laughs> rescue. I just happen to be there. Oh, you're too modest, Jake. Come along, Barry. Let me get you a stiff one. <laughs> you looked a little tense when you came in, darling, but I've got, fortunately, a fact. I'm sorry I'm late. You're not late. Then why are you looking at me like that? Smile while we talk. I don't want to see it. What do you think I'm going to do? I don't know what you're going to do. I, I, it's very difficult to tell, actually. But there are not going to be any tantrums tonight. Are you, you? lock me up in the shed? Miss Chandler? Thank you, Winifred. <clears throat> Seltzer. Seltzer. Winifred is going to keep an eye on you, as will I. There's not going to be a repeat of the performance you gave at Erica's wedding. Why invite me if I'm such a potential threat to your social reputation? I don't care what people think about me. But I sure as hell care what they think about my family. You are going to do a little damage control tonight. Well, I solemnly swear not to break any furniture, set any fires, or throw any food or drink at the guests. Thank you. Why don't you spend some time with Jake? He's attractive and not married. <clears throat> Did you make any headway with that business we discussed? You mean securing my assets after I leave Mrs. Chandler? I'm taking care of it as we speak. Ah. Uh, another Martin seeks third-party status. Mm -hmm. Would you just keep my mother-in-law occupied? It's a good thing I work out. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Ah. Uh, How are you? I am fine. Mm -hmm. Welcome. You know Tanner Jordan? Yes, Tanner. Welcome. Uh, is Matteo coming? No, he had to fly to Texas with his mother for business. Trouble? They'll hide it off at the pass, I'm sure. Um, does everybody know Tanner Jordan? Hello. Mary. Tanner. Hello. Hey. Scott, it's always a pleasure to see you. Likewise, Mr. Jordan. You know, after all that stuff with my dad, I'm uh, pretty surprised I'm here, Harry. Why, you thought family problems would phase me? <laughs> well, anybody else would have run a mile when they found out that it was a lie. Look, I, um, I didn't find out that I was, um, Adam's daughter until high school. So all of this came as quite a shock to me. You kidding? No, really. But I, I learned something in a meeting once, you know, you shouldn't judge your insides by other people's outsides. When you found out, it must have been quite a kick, huh? Mm, not really, I mean... Life at Casa Chandler can be no day at the beach, you know. These walls have had their share of misery. Well, if it was me, I'd find it pretty difficult to uh, pass it up, you know, for the simple life. Oh, not me. I mean, what I have with Mateo, that's the real good life. Get all the caring and understanding and hugs and kisses whenever I want them. Well, you could have that in a mansion, too. I don't know. It's not the same, you know? Whatever luxury I gave up to live with and love Mateo is well worth it to me. I guess I never really fancied myself an heiress anyway. <laughs> Tanner, so how does Pine Valley stack up with your native Australia? Well, it's colder, <laughs> but um, the people are just as warm. <laughs> oh, good answer. I'm, I must say, I'm fascinated with the way you uh, incorporated the past and the present in, in your house. Back home, we, the charm of the architecture more resembles a, a function or, or the environment. Mm. Uh, yes, it's a sort of expansive with uh, clean lines, as I recall. And you have so much history here, you can infuse that with the soul of, of the place. Whereas, well, we're working on it, <laughs> but we'll get there with some personal touches. Mm. I really appreciate the way you would incorporate your impeccable taste with your personal style. It's, it's <laughs> terrific. Thank you. My husband does have impeccable taste. I mean, really, he has museum quality, taste. He has it in the floor coverings and the paintings and all the knickknacks in between, truly. <laughs> well, we're all here now. I'd, uh, I'd like to offer a toast, if I may. I think we're all quite aware that we have just witnessed uh, a milestone in broadcast journalism in this town, in this state. Hell, it went national, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm talking, of course, about the story of little Amanda Dillon being trapped in the Merrick Well. Uh, first, to Jake Martin, whose strength and daring and courage gifted the Dillon family with a happy ending to this story. Jake? Good job. Well done, man. Perhaps you give Sky the uh, printed scoop of your heroics for her uh, magazine, Tempo? Hmm? I have a feeling you two might make quite a team. Cheers. And now, my beautiful and brilliant wife, Liza, who has the instincts of a bloodhound and the sensitivity of a seasoned pro. She crafted a story that was exciting, that was moving, and will no doubt bring showers of awards to WRCW. And let us not forget that she's the one that found Amanda Dillon in the first place. And darling, bravissima. Here, here. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh, I'm sorry. That happens to be priceless. Yeah, well, um, I'm sorry, I'm a klutz. All right. Uh, you didn't uh, toast. Obviously, you have some reservations about the way we handled the Amanda Dillon story. <clears throat> well, Laura's been at the hospital nonstop. Uh, she doesn't have time for news analysis. Oh, yeah, but she obviously has some objection to the toast. Adam. I'd like to know why. Adam, you No, don't... It, no, really, it's it's fine. Um, if you, if you would like to know why, uh. I, I think what your wife did to Janet and the Dillons was obscene. I don't think personal or private business needs to be televised. And if you recall, this whole mess started because an innocent little girl saw something on a videotape of your show that she should never have seen in the first place. So then when she runs away from home and stumbles into a hole in the ground and nearly dies, all you can do is shove a camera in her face. That's news. No, it's not. It didn't have to be. Janet found her. And she was in danger, too, until Jake and I showed up. Yeah, and you could have just called 911 and helped her out, but no, you had to turn the whole thing into a media circus. So what you're saying is we should have sat on the story. Nobody needed to know all that stuff. I mean, and people's lives got trashed. And Amanda is just a little kid. I mean, don't you even care that you hurt an innocent little girl? And, and Janet, she, she is devastated. She is completely cut out of Amanda's life. Why? Because the public wants to know? Laura, this is a dinner party, not a journalism no, class. No, no, no. Let her, let her talk. I ask her for her opinion. I'd like to hear it. Well, so would I. Laura, are you saying that there should be no TV coverage of crises at all? When I lived in the SROs in New York City, every Christmas our local station would, would send their camera crews out to uh, tape the wretched refuse getting their yearly toy from the Do-Gooder Society, and everyone was so smiley and so um, anxious to help and so concerned about our plight. That was bull. All they wanted was their weepy, sobby little news blurb. Period. The end. So when Miss Colby showed up at the hospital with her stupid stuffed horse for Amanda, I was way ahead of her. I mean, really, what, what were you after, huh? Because either way the story went, whether it was um, rescue in the nick of time or, or tragic death in abandoned mine, you were going to have your film at 10 and a rating score. And that's the bottom line. Because nobody cares about sweet, innocent little Amanda or, or poor Janet. That is why I think it's obscene, and that is why I can't raise my glass to the person responsible. You have every right to your opinion, Laurel, and so do I. I respect your loyalty to your friends. But I respect journalism, and journalism respects the truth. It's our job to search and reveal the facts. It's a simple job description. It's not an evil plot. Well, your, your new mother could tutor you on that subject, Laura. And on the rules of etiquette as well. Well, uh, seems the Chandler men like women who've got strong opinions. Isn't that right, Uncle Adam? So it seems. Excuse us for a second. Hey, Dad, how about a toast to those?
strong-minded Chandler women. To our lovely and outspoken women. Erica, this is neither the time nor the place. No, don't you dare try to finesse me, Sky Chandler. You were dead set against my marrying Dimitri. You broke into my wedding. You made a public spectacle. You made sure that I didn't take those vows. Now, out with it. This is it, Sky. You tell me exactly what it is that you know that I don't. Ladies, the party's inside. Um, Erica's here on Tempo Business. Um, she is the April edition's author, featured author. Erica Kane, Beyond the Pain. Right. Explain. Uh, excuse us. Sure. Maybe you should explain to Laura that biting the hand that feeds her is bad manners. Laura doesn't work for you or Liza. She's a guest here. This is a party, not a roast. Oh, come on, Uncle Adam. Liza got him. As good as she gave. Liza's not on the menu. Perhaps your friend would be more at home with a burger barn. Here, this should buy two of the works. Laura and I are staying. Besides, there's no floor show at the burger barn. You know, in my line, timing is everything. And mine reeks. I just think you need a small crash course in small talk. Uh, well, the, you know, what do you think about how the flyers are doing? Uh, and actually, I really want to get the recipe for those crab puffs because I think they're fantastic. When are you going to stop using your power and position to hurt innocent people like Janet? You know, I got to tell you, it's the very first time I've heard the word innocent and Janet in the same sentence. Well, how, how would you like it if the cameras were turned? You know, I mean, I mean, what if your life was front and center and and everything about you, private and personal, was was beamed out to the global village? And we all have something to hide. Scott, I'm uh, fresh out of small talk. I think maybe we should go home. Oh, detente. That's an excellent idea. Blessed are the peacekeepers, right? Uh, Litigator Donning? We are <laughs> staying. But if Laura wants to go, well, why don't you just send us to bed without our supper? <laughs> now, young lady, eat your veggies or no dessert. Oh, and singing at the table is strictly forbidden. Uh, uh, elbows off, please. And don't even think about trying to eat all your peas with a knife. <laughs> and, well, opinions expressed by the guests are not necessarily those of the management. Well, it's all right with you, isn't it, Liza? Let me tell you something. I may not agree with Laura's viewpoint, but I will defend her First Amendment to say whatever she wants. Now, in the interest of world peace, shall we partake of the buffet? Oh, that's a good idea. Well, I have to make a call. Um, uh, Jake, would you escort Liza? Take oh, someplace um, with La Sky. Let's go in two by two, darling, just like Noah's darting little ark. <laughs> Excuse us. <clears throat> so the condemned have their last supper. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Jake, my good man, uh, uh, where's Sky? Uh, I think she's upstairs having some kind of conference with Erica. Try to get them to join the fun. Oh, I'll go. Oh, no. Um, um, <laughs> your powers of persuasion are legendary, darling. But uh, if a strapping buck like Jake can't lure Sky down here, well, <laughs> what chance do you have? Oh, I see. Failed to turn Sky downstairs. Oh, uh, no. She'll be here momentarily. Well, our guests have stopped feasting on each other long enough to enjoy Lucretia's buffet, so fun uh, appetit. I uh, don't think I'm hungry. Really? Oh, a rousing game of hang the hostess always gives me an appetite. Oh, Morris, attack was unconscionable. I'm unbowed. I don't even have a flesh wound. Who we'll give the lady points for style. Please. It takes more than a sermon from an overwrought schoolgirl to bring me to my knees. <laughs> You're as tough as you are beautiful, Liza. I stand in awe. You know, Adam, your toast this evening, it really meant a lot to me. Verbal proof that chivalry isn't dead. Not that you need this tarnished knight to come to your rescue, but for whatever it's worth, I meant every word of it. There's something wonderful about a woman who's the hero of her own story. Yeah, shall we? Sure. Let's find a... Little place for my tarnished night. <laughs> Excuse me. Over here? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Adam? What what happened to this? 
Liza, is there a problem? The... The, the um, Fabergé egg is missing. It's, it's, um... Adam? That priceless treasure? What's going on? Uh, it, it seems the Fabergé egg is missing. Well, maybe Winifred moved it. Winifred? Winifred doesn't move a throw pillow without my permission. When's the last time someone saw it? Well, Laura was admiring it earlier. Laura? Did you by any chance uh, pick up the egg to show it to someone and uh, would you forget to put it back? I think you should stow the handcuffs, Mr. Chandler. I didn't touch your precious little knickknack. Laura, knack. nobody's accusing you. Well, actually, he knows that I've been busted for shoplifting before, so... Good heavens. Well, I think everybody should just, like, pat me down. Do a search no. and we can settle everything No, let's right just now. calm down. It, it, this well, need to... actually, you know, before you call the cops, why don't we just check my stuff? That's the great way to settle everything. My bag's right there. My coat's in the closet. Go ahead. No, that won't be necessary. Well, I'm doubting. She did volunteer. Here. Huh? Go with it with a fine-tooth comb. Uh, bring it to the hospital. Have an x-ray. She might be back in a gun or high point, explosives. You've Scott. You've made your point. It won't be necessary. We'll forget about it. is not what it looks like. What's your explanation? Obviously, someone slipped inside her bag. Well, gee, why would anybody want to do a thing like that? Someone who would want to make Laura look bad? Uh, is this some sort of new parlor game? No, it's just someone's lame attempt to frame Laura and make her look like a thief. Like, I'd be stupid enough to fall for it. Are you saying that I staged this burglary? Don't be absurd. May I suggest that you prosecute to the full extent of the law and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't we all just take it down a level here? <laughs> the voice of reason. Well, if you ask me, Jake's a breath of fresh air. Well, nobody asked you, darling. All right, party's over. Let's go. Come on, I'll take you home. Darn, and it was just starting to get good. $297, dollars thank goodness it's all here. Marion, I'm sorry our evening's cut short. Oh, darling. Well, why don't we pack up this party and uh, move it someplace else? You know, Chez Panisse has uh, curtained booths, and the uh, waiters are extremely discreet, darling. Well, I'm afraid I have an early court date. What a pity. You're forcing me to take a rain check, aren't you? Mm. Well, all right, Barry, good night. Pray for drought. This night has been an unmitigated disaster. Thank you. It's just a blip on the Richard scale compared to the bigger picture. Yeah. Your plan to rub Liza and Jake together to create sparks seems to have fizzled. No, nonsense. It's just, they're just getting warmed up. And if I were you, I'd do something to turn up the heat. Or come divorce time, Liza's going to pick you clean. Night, Daddy. Uh, thanks for the invite. Well, you're not going home already. Set it yourself. The party's over. Well, that didn't apply to you. Daddy's very selective as to who he kicks out of the house. I have the bruises to prove it. Good night. I'll uh, make sure she gets home okay. Well, Adam was certainly attentive tonight, darling. Was he? Yes, he sang your praises and he came to the aid of his lady fair. Oh, remind me to cancel your subscription to Romance Classics. Well, surely you must have felt his eyes on you, darling, every time Jake Martin loomed a little close. You know, darling, if my guess is right, tonight's going to be the instigation of an open bedroom door policy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. I needed that. Well, another Chandler soiree down in flames. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bumpy night, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, the biggest uh, shame is that nobody got a chance to taste Lucretia's wonderful dessert. <laughs> uh, anybody feel like um, chocolate mousse cheesecake? Yeah. Well, so the whole night's not a total disaster. No, well, good. 
I'll have uh, Winifred bring it in for you. It's uh, <clears throat> a bit of a bumpy night. Yes, well, my father is the master of the understatement. Yeah, well, I'd hate to be here for a jolt if that's a bump. Oh, come on. You missed your chance to make your escape. In no way. I finally got a chance to see you smile. There I go again. Look. Haley, you, you remember that time I asked you if I made you nervous? I believe what you did was imply that I was making passes at you or something. Look, I was a complete idiot, all right? The truth is that I... I was attracted to you from day one, but I, I just didn't want to admit it, so I made made this whole thing that, like, the sparks were coming from you. Listen, Haley, I'm sorry, okay? I'm really sorry. I, I know you love Mateo, okay? I love the guy, too. And I would do nothing, absolutely nothing, to come between our friendship. Now, I just, I just want you to know that... Don't be afraid of me, okay? There's just nothing coming from me anymore, all right? Thanks, Tanner. Bit of a bumpy night. Yeah. Haven't you had enough? Oh, I admit I've exceeded my usual allotment, but uh, in view of tonight's festivities. I think I'll join you. Excellent. What should we drink to? Host and hostess of the year. Anybody we know? <laughs> well, we're not perfect, but we make a great team. Indeed. <laughs> so, any idea why Erica showed up? Mm. I, have no, I have no idea at all. I, uh, you know Erica. <laughs> mm. Mother, boy, she was in top form. Oh, she, she zoned in on Barry like a heat-seeking missile. I tell you, I'd love to find a silo out of the country for her somewhere. Yeah, which country? Maybe Iraq? <laughs> I'll call Saddam in the morning. I'll try to arrange it. <laughs> you know, I've always thought the best part of any party was dishing it afterwards. Yeah. Doing the play-by-play -play while picking up the cocktail glasses. Mm. We're just calling the whole bloody mess off and leaving it till morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what marriage is, really. It's, it's... the small moments, those... kind of in-between times, to share in the dark, while the rest of the house is asleep. You know, Adam, that's the first time I've heard you refer to what we have as a marriage. Uh, slip of the tongue? <laughs> I don't think so. Mm. 